We are back tonight and joined by Olden Polonese of the Detroit Pistons and the National Basketball Association. He is a professional uh, player for the Pistons. Uh, he has not turned his back on his family and his countrymen. He was born in Port au Prince, Haiti. His family knew, uh, moved to New York when he was a youngster. He is now one of few uh, Haitian-born celebrities who has given his efforts uh, to what has become what one commentator called a loud voice for otherwise mute people. Olden, nice to have you on the program, and thank, thank you. you for coming in tonight. Thank you for I'll get me. to basketball in a second, but let me ask you here about the plight of the Haitian people and the refugees and their pleas for help, which seemingly have fallen on deaf ears in America. The American people can't quite seem to understand why they ought to be concerned with these folk, and, and, and they feel that it's, it, it's another problem that is not ours. And so I throw that out to you here and, and ask you why this is a, a concern of the American people. Well, from my personal beliefs, I feel that as Americans, we, we've opened up a Pandora's box from a long time ago. And the fact that this land, the way it was set up, and accepting immigrants from different countries, because everybody that's here, you know, all the original people were immigrants. Right. And so we were saying, hey, give us your huddled masses. And now that we've been doing this for so many years, there's these people right here who need the same help because we had the Cubans coming over and they were accepted. We've had so many different groups of people coming over and we were readily, you know, making ourselves available to help them. And now we have the Haitians in a similar situation oh, as all the other that, groups. You see, what I think might be working against the Haitian refugees at this particular point in time is that a lot of Americans are concerned about the massive immigration from south of our border. People coming up here from Mexico, Mexico and other Latin American countries in search of employment and political stability. And many American people think, you know, that we, we just can't allow this, this, this runaway immigration to continue. And that might be working against the better interests of the Haitian okay. people who are trying to come here. You know, I heard a comment made that, you know, Americans did not want a mass exodus of Haitians. I don't even think it's about a mass exodus. These people are seeking help. And I think that's the bottom line. That's why a lot of people have forgotten, you know, they're not understanding. The Haitians aren't saying, we want to come to the U.S. to take over, to have jobs and all. Most of these people want to stay in Haiti. But their situation is so bad over there, that's why they, you know, they risk their lives on those makeshift boats. You know, just, they feel that this is better than what, they, what they're oh, going no, your through. Your point is well made. It's like, it's like uh, here about a month or two ago when the, uh, the refugees from China tried to enter San Francisco mm -hmm. and supposedly paid twenty or $25,000 yeah. a piece American to come here. Can you imagine how bad it is back there? For them to want to give, you know, exactly, give it's all the same situation. But that's what I'm saying. All of this is the same thing. You know, my thing has always been, and I've been the type of person all my life. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, blue, pink. It doesn't matter to me since we're so well, if bent. You're, if you're since we're so, if you got blue, no, pink, since you're we're so bent, pink. since we're so bent on using colors, you know, because I feel that you know nobody's a color, just like I'm not black and you're not white, okay. Mm -hmm. And so, but we're so intent on using colors, so that's why I use it for this, for this example. But if, my thing is I believe in human rights. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's the Mexicans coming over, the Cubans, the Chinese, the Haitians. It doesn't matter to me. If people are in trouble, if you're going to do it for one group, then you have to do it for the other group also. Oh, no question, except that there does come a time when a nation reaches a point at which its generosity is stretched to the breaking point. But we've put ourselves in that position. Every time something's going on in a country, who's there? The United States of America. Why isn't that? You know, it's like you look around. You know, there's never going to be a coup in the U.S. because there's no U.S. Embassy here. Okay? <laughs> and so it's like, but everywhere else, you know, you have the U.S. is everywhere. And I think we've put ourselves in that position. And now, you know, we have to... Sometimes you got to look at it. You got to pay the consequences. Okay, fine. But what if the consequences are such that in that in trying to help the rest of the world in its problem areas, if in trying to be the melting pot or the safe haven for all of those who are politically or economically oppressed, you bankrupt the motherland. You you you, you in essence kill the goose that has provided the golden eggs. The United States of America cannot afford to surely to solve all the problems in the world. There, there, there is a limit to the generosity of the American nation as there is to any other. But let me pause for a commercial here. I, this, I, I'm awkward in doing that when we're talking about <laughs> something like this, but uh, you know, the, the business is the business. We will continue with Mr. Polonese and eventually, if time permits, some of you on the toll-free line will be right back after these messages.